Paddock is solely responsible for this heinous act. Stephen Paddock, an unassuming 64-year-old with no criminal record, is now allegedly the man behind the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history. From the 32nd floor of Mandalay Bay, he unleashed a torrent of bullets into the crowd of a country music festival 1,100 feet away. Listen. The sound different from any we've heard from all other recent mass shootings because this time a rifle functioning like a machine gun was used. An individual was described as a lone wolf. I don't know how it could have been prevented. As the death toll has continued to rise, investigators rush to track down everything, anything about the shooter. We're trying to understand what's wrong, what happened. We're still just completely befuddled. Eric Paddock, the shooter's brother, says he has no clue as to what led his brother on this murderous rampage, remembering him as a man who grew up without conviction. Steve had nothing to do with any political organization, religious organization, no white supremacists, nothing, as far as I know. And the FBI says there's no connection to any overseas terror group, despite a claim today by ISIS. We have determined to this point no connection with an international terrorist group. And while he enjoyed gambling, his brother says he didn't have a problem and that he'd recently won a $40,000 jackpot. He was a wealthy guy, and he liked to play video poker. He went on cruises. He... <laughs> He sent his mother cookies. But in recent months, Paddock's financial activity had become abnormal, sending tens of thousands of dollars to someone in the Philippines. Authorities say his girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, is right now. Officials are hoping Danley, who once worked as a casino hostess for high-end players, might be able to provide some insight. Earlier today, authorities descended on the two Nevada homes Paddock owned in hopes of finding a lead, one in Reno, at the other in Mesquite, authorities used a robot to take down the garage door. Once inside, they found 19 guns and more ammunition. Paddock's family does say that he was a licensed gun owner before this incident. Yes, he had a couple of guns. He did not own machine guns that I knew of in any way, shape, or form. Something just incredibly wrong happened to my brother. But what we know now is that the murderous attack was planned and plotted. Paddock had built up a massive arsenal inside the hotel room. 1692 means we got shots fired at 415 AS. Uh, Route 91 sounded like an automatic firearm. According to authorities, he had at least 23 rifles and handguns, one of them an assault rifle modified to fire automatically. Some of the weapons were high powered, capable of slicing through police body armor. This is a classic uh, WMD. This is a, uh, a weapon and a man of mass destruction. According to authorities, many of the guns were bought legally. The Mesquite-based gun shop Guns and Guitars confirmed that Paddock had legally bought some guns from their shop. All necessary background checks were followed. He never gave any indication or reason to believe he was unstable or unfit at any time, the general manager said in a statement. We do not yet know if these guns were used in the attack. Nevada has some of the least restrictive gun laws in the country. There's no limit on the number of firearms one person can possess, and semi-automatic weapons are legal to purchase. Their capability far exceeds that of a handgun, and when adapted, it has the potential to be even deadlier, as seen in this YouTube video. It's a significant game changer in the way we respond to active shooter. Minutes are not quick enough. And tonight is the deadly power one man was able to wield, leaving us all to ask the question, why did it happen again? Former New York City Police Commissioner and ABC News contributor Ray Kelly is with us tonight. And, and Commissioner, tonight, what are investigators looking at, you think, looking for? Why? That's the big question. Why did this individual, apparently ordinary uh, person, no criminal record, why did he do this? The, most, the biggest mass shooting in the history of our, our country. I'm sure there were signs that some people... Uh, should have seen or Talk may have seen that. them reported. What, what, what kind of signs do you think people miss? We don't know what the signs are. They will be hopefully identified during the investigation, but suddenly violent behavior or threats to do something like this, this is the types of things that we've seen in investigations of this nature when they go forward. People in your business are, are students. You're always learning from these kinds of experiences. Yep. What will law enforcement take from this they can apply hopefully in the future? Well, I think we'll see more anti-sniper capacity put in place by police departments throughout the country. You have to be a fairly 
good-sized police department to do that because most don't have the resources to do it. New York City Police Department has been doing it for years when you have major, major gatherings. But again, we're blessed here with, you know, with the numbers to, uh, to do it. But there, there's no easy way from the ground of uh, getting someone who is shooting from 32 stories up. Commissioner Ray Kelly, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.